Hey there! Welcome to Code Hour. My name is Lee Richardson, and in this episode, I'm going to give an overview of how to generate code coverage in uh, at the command line using Cake. And so this is going to augment a blog post and video that I did in May, where I was giving an introduction to Cake. So uh, hopefully you've already got the background knowledge of what that is. But if not, uh, buckle your seatbelts. This is going to be a lot of fun. So let me get started. So. I have here a really simple project. This is a uh, .NET Core application, and I have a uh, just, just a command line app here. And the, the main thing we do, whoops, the main thing we do here is go into uh, we create a, a new greeter object, and we greet. It doesn't really matter what this does, though. It, it's kind of irrelevant. But I did want to get a little bit of cyclomatic complexity in here, and so we can see uh, what code coverage is going to look like. Um, if you're not familiar with code coverage, oh, I should probably zoom this in, shouldn't I? Whoa, whoa, how about that? Okay, we got a little bit of zoom going on. So, uh, if you are, well, maybe one, maybe one more step up? How's, oh, it's so big. All right, hopefully that works for everybody and isn't overwhelming. Uh, so, and then I've got some, I've got some tests. And so the tests are over here, and I've got an absolutely terrible name for this project, uh, Cake Coverage Test dot test. Eh, you know, uh, and I happen to be using XUnit. Um, I don't have a strong preference about XUnit or NUnit or VS Test. This uh, this whole uh, video will uh, cover all three. It doesn't really matter. In fact, um, it's gonna when you use the .NET commands at the command line and you use .NET space test, uh, it automatically figures out what framework you're using and just works, which is phenomenal. So it doesn't really matter that I happen to be using an attribute here called fact. I could just as easily be using, which is X, an X unit uh, attribute, or I could just as easily be using N unit. It doesn't really matter. So, okay. So, so yeah, yeah, we've got the the main line test, we've got our tests. So uh, we want to we want to enable this with cake. So I went over this. I'm just going to go over it real quickly uh, because I already went over this in that intro video that I showed you uh, over over here, this intro to cake video that I did. So um, but uh, just as a quick recap, if I want to install cake, I can say install to workspace. I don't want to give it a uh, the main uh, command line app that I'll be using will be a build.cake. Uh, yes, I want to install bootstrappers and I want to install a config file and oops, uh, do I want to install dependencies for debugging? Yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, and so we are here we are with a build.cake file and the first thing we want to do, it's probably clean. Clean is usually a first good step because you want a nice um, consistent environment every single time you, you run. So clean is going to delete out our bin and object directories. And for the for the unit testing, it would probably be good to also clean out the uh, coverage directory where the code coverage results and the unit testing results get um, exported to. So let's see. By default here, let's see. We got a setup and a teardown. We don't care about that. Uh, and oh, by the way, I have uh, just a quick recap. I have these two plugins which are relevant to this project. So if I go over to extensions, you're going to see I have. Uh, the cake one, which I've got C sharp one, which is relevant. Uh, I happen to have 1.17 and the cake one uh, 11.4. Since the last time I did a video, they introduced uh, the, the plugin now gets you to the ability to just run tasks directly here, like this, which is a really nice feature. It makes things so much easier. Uh, if you're in Visual Studio, there's an alternative way to do this if you install the cake plugin for Visual Studio. Uh, actually, I happen to have that over here, and once you have it all working nicely, you can go to the Task Runner Explorer, and hey, there it is. It's it uh, it found the cake and shows you we've got a default task. Whatever. I prefer to to modify my cake scripts in Visual Studio Code because it's got a much better, much better um, plugin ecosystem, and debugging is a lot easier. All right. So uh, let's just make sure this works. If we run the default task, we would like for it to say hello cake. So I'm gonna run task and it is running our bootstrapper and the bootstrapper happens to be PowerShell because I'm on Windows. And so now it's running the default target over here. And if this works correctly, we should see the words hello cake. And I'm gonna scroll up and hey, there we go. It ran the default task and output hello cake. Well, that's not super useful. The next thing we need to do is probably to 
uh, I don't know, maybe we should put it in tasks. Create a new task called clean. So task, oh, come on, task. Cake task with action. That's one of those uh, things that comes along with the with the plugin. So now I can say, and then it just auto generated all of that. So now I want to call this maybe like clean, and then I want to clean directories. Yes, please. I'm going to clean directories, and the let's, call, let's do this. Oh yeah, do, do star star. Uh, if you're not familiar with star star, again that is uh, like recursively go through all directories. So go recursively go through all directories and find one called bin and um, let's be let's be more specific and use the configuration parameter that we passed in. So we're gonna pass in a parameter up here which is uh, whether we want to run this in release or debug and so like let's not clean out debug if we're running in release or vice versa. I just find this makes things a little tidier if I do it this way. So we want to clean out the bin, we want to clean out the uh, by the way, just control B, control, uh, it's so automatic, control D, control D to duplicate. Uh, and I guess shift delete, yeah, shift delete, we'll delete the line too. Some little handy shortcuts that I use there. Okay, so we're gonna clean out our bin and our obj directories. And if I, oops, open up D, uh, C, dev, build, Cake, uh, no, no, cake, coverage, test, there we go. And I think if we go in here and bin and release, yeah, we're gonna see some stuff from like the last time I ran this. So if the clean works correctly, we should see the .NET Core App 2.1 on all this stuff just get cleaned out. Ready to try it? Let's see how it goes, run task. One thing I really like doing that after uh, you know, like, what is it, 20 years of, of writing code is I like, I like doing small little incremental changes rather than like, you know, write a lot of code and a ton of code and then like run it and see how it goes. Uh, especially if things run fast enough. Boom, cleaned, worked. There's nothing in our release directory anymore. So that worked, that's nice. Uh, next thing that we probably ought to do after a clean task is a uh, .NET restore. And that'll just restore all of the NuGet packages. That's just a standard thing you always do. So I'm going to do a task with action called, I don't know, how about restore? And uh, dot is dependent on, that happens to be dependent on clean. Boom, boom. and then we go down to the thing that we're doing, and there is net core restore, yeah, there it is. Now I've got the IntelliSense working um, and the IntelliSense is absolutely fantastic here. By the way, uh, one of the things that's cool about .NET Core Restore is you just run it in the current directory and it figures it all out. It doesn't need to, it finds the solution and all the projects and, and does a .NET Restore for all of them. So I don't even need to pass any parameters. Uh, if I didn't, by, by the way, the IntelliSense, yeah, IntelliSense is a, kind of a pain to get it working. One thing that it's worth doing is if you hit Control P and the arrow, which was how I installed uh, Cake to begin with, oops, you can also install IntelliSense support, and uh, and then you need to close and reopen code, and then the IntelliSense will uh, usually start working. It's a little buggy, sometimes it doesn't. I got lucky and it's working for me today. But uh, if it's not working, or if uh, for whatever reason you need to uh, look up the documentation, I just wanted to build cake. Um, just remind, remind y'all, that the uh, references are over here. The documentation is extremely good, I think. And we were going to do like .NET Core. We're doing a bunch of .NET Core things, and we just did a clean. Oh, I guess there's a specific .NET Core clean. I could have done that. Whatever. I didn't. I happen to use clean directories, which just empties the directory. Uh, but could have done that, I guess. And then there's a pack publish restore, here it is, .NET Core restore. So that was what I was doing. 
Okay. Um, I could run that, but you wouldn't really see much. What would be more interesting is to add the next task with action called build. And in this case, this is also, this is going to be dependent on restore. That is dependent on, by the way, this, this little is dependent on thing is one of the things I love about using um, cake. And it's not specific to cake, right? I mean, this could be make, this could be rake, this could be sake <laughs> or pea sake or however you say that, uh, the PowerShell make build tool, doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the thing is when you have make tools versus using just pure PowerShell scripts, you get the benefit of uh, the beauty of being able to have all these individual tasks and just say what they're dependent on and let the build system figure out what needs to run, what doesn't need to run, and how to avoid r running duplicative things. So it knows not to run build twice, for instance. All right, there's just a little spiel about that. Now, I'm gonna run dot net core build, I think, yeah, okay. And uh, what are we gonna build here? We are going to build um, dot slash, we're gonna run the, the solution, and what was the solution? Solution was cake coverage test SLN. Boom, we're gonna run. Whoops. Oh, hey, where did I go? There we go. Back up there. Control J to close that window there. And dotnet core build. So we're gonna build that thing. That seems like a, a pretty good start, but it would be nice to have some settings. So let's tell it. Um, whether we want to do release or debug configuration. So uh, we need to pass in some .NET Core build settings. So new .NET Core build settings. Boom, that. And I think what we want is uh, configuration. Yep, configuration equals, and I think we can just say configuration which was a parameter that we specified up here. I'm not gonna show you how to um, change that because that was part of the other video. So, uh, okay, so we've got a build, we've got a restore, we've got a clean. And I think if I were to run this right now, that would probably be good enough. And if it works, we will see that, actually it'll build, we should build both of those things because they're both in the solution. So if I go to bin and release, oh yeah, it's doing a .NET Core restore, good. Uh, yep, that, yep, that looks okay, that looks good. Build, uh, restore, restore. Um, hmm. Did a restore. Maybe we don't need to do a restore, maybe it was automatically doing it. Whatever, it doesn't take long. Uh, nine seconds isn't too bad. And we go back into Dynet Core App, and there we go. We've got our DLLs and our PDBs, and I bet if we go into the unit test, we'd see the same thing. Uh, you can just trust me that it does. How about that? So, to build. Okay, it's time to test. Let's run our unit tests. And so, to do that, we'll need a new task. Oops, task with lowercase t should give us, there we go. Uh, we're going to run, we're going to call this test. And we're just building up at this point. I know we're 13 minutes in, but it is code hour, so hopefully you're getting enough uh, details. And, uh, okay, so let's see, we're gonna do a test. Oh, so this is this is the beauty of .NET Core here, is that .NET Core has the built-in test uh, facility. So if we were doing this at the command line, we would type in .NET Core um, test, I think. Um, <coughs> so uh, because we're in, cake, we get the C-sharp equivalence of that with the code completion and compilation and uh, I don't know, it's it's a nice way to do things, I think. So we're gonna do dot .NET Core um, test, is that right? Yes, there we go, .NET Core test. And what are we gonna pass in as a parameter? Probably the name of the uh, CS proj. So let's see, we're here at the root. We're gonna go into uh, test. And then we're going to go to, um, yeah, that. And that's going to kind of long and probably be, we should really define a lot of 
directory names and things up front. So let's do uh, var test location equals, and then there's an alias here, and the alias is just file. It's such a common, oops, such a common thing that you do that they've got a bunch of nice built-in aliases for files and directories, and you can just plus them together, and it automatically, if you've got two slashes, it automatically makes it one and makes everything nice and, and tidy. So there we go, we've got a test location. I'm going to do .NET Core test, and um, yeah, so I think we're going to pass in our test location. Boom. And I think that would just work if we did it like that. And there would be nothing wrong with that. If, however, we wanted to um, make this a little bit tidier, we can say new.net core test settings. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. .net core test settings. Uh, there. Okay. And we should probably specify a configuration. Now, that's a little weird to, I don't know, like, I don't know if you really want test. A debug or release configuration, but how about we just don't think about it now and um, use the one that was passed in, <laughs> and that'll make everything. Oops, uh, I think it's conf there it is configuration equals configuration. Nice. Okay, and uh, here's okay. Here's the one uh, one thing that it's a little bit of a, a trip up. Uh, it's not a trip up. It, if you were to run this, it would work beautifully. It would run the tests, but we would. Uh, well, actually, I didn't put I didn't put is dependent on. So um, surprisingly, if I were to run this, it would work. So you might be looking at this and um, and thinking, well, it shouldn't work because we forgot to say is dependent on build, right? You, you can't just run tests and not have it build. But as a matter of fact, the command .NET core test, which is which is running under the covers, that command automatically builds. So you might think, well, that's good, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing that you got to keep in mind, and I, I cover this in a lot more detail in uh, the blog post that I, uh, I don't have it up yet, but the, the blog post is if you have task, if you have like a high level task like publish, and it's dependent on running the tests, and it's also dependent on like building, and then test is also dependent on building. Um, well, in this case, if the way it's written up here, the test is going to run a compilation, and the build task would run a compilation. So you'd end up building twice. And the whole point of using a build management system like Cake is that it should be smart enough to know to not build twice. So what we want to do here is Oh, and so, yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, that would be a problem if we did, if we had, like, publish, and publish was dependent on test and build, which, or or something like that. It's, it's when you get into those multiple dependency paths, uh, which is actually much more common than you might think, which things get a little bit more complicated. So, so we can fix that uh, potentially by saying that well, let's let's let Cake manage this. So we can say is dependent on build, but this command here, the .NET Core test, is still compiling. So now in this scenario. Since this is dependent on build, we're going to go build here, but then this is going to go build a second time. So we just want .NET Core to leave us alone and let us handle all the building ourselves. And now we're going to get, and that way we'd get the full benefits of Cake. So to do that, we just say no build equals true. And I think that should give us all we need. And if we run this now, this is going to, uh, it's going to do our building again, even though I just did it like five minutes ago. I could temporarily comment out that is dependent on task, uh, which is something I do when I'm testing uh, build scripts a lot. I'm like, well, I know I just ran this. You don't need to run it again, so I'll comment things out well, just for speed purposes. But uh, uh, it's okay for now. It's going to have, have rebuilt, and it's cleaner that way. And now we're going to see the task task. 
Uh, okay, we're going to test, uh, we're going to run them all for cake coverage test.dll. Awesome, yes, that's what, exactly what we wanted. Starting test execution, total tests one, great, passed one, failed zero, skip zero, excellent. Tests ran successfully, hey, that's what we want to see. But we're still at the state where we don't have any code coverage. And that was the whole point of, that was the whole call out point of this episode. So uh, to do that and, uh, and then view the results locally, because you know you could use you could use uh, Visual Studio DevOps uh, uh, Dev DevOps Azure DevOps. There we go. You could use what used to be called VSTS and now is called Azure DevOps. You could just do it all there. But I love being able to run things locally and test things locally. It's so much faster. And as a developer, it just it's near and dear my heart to use something like Cake um, instead of like a bunch of draggy droppy things in Azure DevOps. Uh, okay, so um, you can debug too. Okay, so uh, so to do this, we need to use a parameter that does not exist yet that was only just recently released, and it's called minus minus collect. And if you were to ask at the command line for dot net. Um, minus minus help, I think we would see, oh yeah, dot net. This is dot net. Test minus minus help. Um, we should see that there is a new parameter called collect. Wow, this is really hard to read at this size. All right, well, you'll just have to, oh, there it is, collect. There it is, yep, collect. Um, and anyway, it, it's there, you don't have to trust me. This was just relatively recently uh, uh, released. Doesn't yet exist in the um, in the cake code, so it would be ideal if we just said collect equals uh, Um, maybe by the time you're watching this video, that is already uh, been updated, but it, it doesn't yet today. So you get to see one of the nice features of Cake, which is the ability to customize the parameters uh, that you're running. And so um, this is available in almost argument customization is a parameter which is available with almost every single Cake plugin and um, thing that you can do. And it's a lambda, and so it takes uh, uh, an args and and then you can say uh, args dot append. There we go. It's a little tidy error down here. I think we're going to say we're going to append minus minus collect dot dot append quoted, which will quote and append the specified arguments because it's got a space in it. So we need append quoted and whoa. Uh, whoop, there. Oh, there we go. All right. Cover coverage, great, and then it needs to know what format to do it in. So append uh, minus minus logger dot append uh, trx, which is which is Visual Studio's native format. So that'll be really handy to put it in trx because we'll be able to upload it to Azure DevOps, which I'll show in another episode, but. Um, for now, I just want to get it all working locally and call it call it call it a night. So this is a collect a logger, and if all goes well, uh, then we should see a test results and the TRX, and oh, we're already seeing coverage. You know what? This is from a previous run. We should have done this right up front. Uh, we should have done a clean so that you know that I'm not lying to you. And uh, I could probably just do clean directory, but whatever. Let's just kick coverage 
test.test, .test. terrible name, terrible name, I apologize. Uh, and test results like that. And we wanna make sure we clean that out. So if I run that right now, let's just make sure we're starting with a nice clean uh, did it run? Is it running? It is running. Okay, running, clean, clean was run, and now if I go into test results, there's nothing there. Okay, so, so you know I'm not lying to you, because uh, I, I have been known to lie to audiences. No, actually I haven't. I've been known to mess things up while live coding. If you've watched any of my episodes, you know that's for, for sure. All right, so uh, we're gonna do the test. Oh wait, what happened to, did I do it in the wrong place? Oh, I put this in the wrong place. I put this all under build. And you guys should have stopped me. Someone should have told me that I was messing things up. Don't do that. That's all good. But uh, that's what comes from having your font size too big. <laughs> okay, back here to build. Oh yeah, there we go. See that argument customization stuff? That goes into the test. That's in .NET Core test. So I know. I know there was some smart folks in the audience uh, yelling at me there, telling me that how wrong I was doing things, and I just wasn't listening loud enough. Or whatever. <laughs> All right, let's try this now. So if this works, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load it up in uh, the dot coverage file. I'm gonna load it up in Visual Studio and you'll be able to see line by line which things are covered and what things are not. Unfortunately, you can't open up dot coverage files in Visual Studio Professional because, uh, I don't know why, because that's just how, how it is and how things work. So, um, uh, okay, we've got, oh, hey, hurry real. Okay, these are new, brand new, as of 6.30, yeah. And inside of here and here and here, we've got, we have got a coverage file, boop, doo, doo, doo. and you'll notice um, that it, it says attached one file or something like that here. Okay, we've got a results file of the TRX, yay. And we have an attachment called dot .coverage. That's very cool, and then it tells you where it is, and it put it into, uh, oh, it suggests, I, get, I wonder if I can just click on it here, control click to follow link. No, it's trying to open in Visual Studio Code. That's not gonna work, but actually it wanted me to use this one here. I don't know what the difference is. I think they, they both work, I tried them both. So over here in Visual Studio, I've got this project uh, also open here and I'm going to open up my coverage file and code coverage results. Okay, yeah, 60% covered. That sounds about right. Inside of Greeter, let's take a look. Uh, can we zoom in, double click on that? Hey, look at that. Now, this has shown us that this line is, if your color, um, if you. <laughs> If you've got problems uh, seeing colors, uh, then this isn't maybe as helpful as it could have been, unfortunately. But uh, you can, for everybody else, you can see that this is like blue and this is orange. So this line was covered, line seven was covered, line 13 was covered, but we do not have any unit tests covering line nine. And I could belabor this point and write another unit test which covers it. You could show that it see that it was uh, successful, but I think this is long enough for one episode. We'll call it a, a code uh, Halbstunde, a code half hour, and um, call, call that a night and call that success. And another time, another place, I will uh, show uploading this to Azure DevOps. So for now, uh, thank you for bearing with me and I hope you learned something. And if you find this useful and uh, I, I hope you did, then you can maybe uh, give us uh, a like. And by us, I mean, uh, you know, the Royal, uh, the Royal us. Give me a like on YouTube. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your support, your support and uh, have a wonderful day.